Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit, I got a daughter, nigga. I'll be damn. If you feel me? You know what I'm saying? And it's like the time that I was away, that shit, like, it hit so hard. I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, nah, nigga, I can't take this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the thing, the worst thing about that whole thing is you can never get back the time. No. Oh. And that's the biggest problem. And it goes so fast. It goes so fast because it's a queen. Your baby is a big baby now. Yeah. Real spare. You gotta, you gotta, as a good person, if you're a good person as yeah. a man, yeah. you're only hoping in your heart that your child, boy or girl, have that compassion for you. What's your best way to What's up with y'all out there? This is the Best Way to Smoke podcast, and you smoking with Big J. And Serpo Jr. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and tell a friend. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you be notified when all this dope content drops. Yeah, please believe. Make sure you do that. And we want to thank everybody that tap in and tune in with us. You know, keep on doing it and spread the word. We got a special guest in the house tonight. We got the, we got the man behind the Smoke One show, you know, a dope artist. Ryan Cash, what it do, my brother? How you doing, man? Yeah, big up, big up on one love, you know. Thanks for having me here. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir, man. How you doing tonight, though? Uh, I'm blessed, you know. I'm good. Yep, yep. That's Can't what I'm complain, right. you know. That's what I'm talking about. And before we dig all the way into the show, we always do the best way to smoke tip. And when we have a guest, we ask the guest, "What's your best way to smoke tip?" Uh, well, the tip would be smoke to meditate. Don't smoke to get high. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. That's deep. That's deep. And why? And, and, and why would you suggest it that way, though? Because if you're looking for a high, you might never get it. Hmm. Know? Because you get this high, and after that, you always want that same high and different strand give you a different high. So you're gonna be smoking, smoking, trying to get that high. You can't get that high. But really, the herbs is for meditation purpose and medical purpose. So you smoke to meditate, you don't smoke to get high. And that's where a lot of young, younger smokers, I should say, get it confused, mm. you know, and just smoke, smoke, smoke. Yeah, just back to back to you back. Give them an ounce, they smoke half an ounce, and then looking at you like they want more stuff, like, bro, you right. move from here. <laughs> you know, you should have right. a puff. Yeah, yeah. Usa. Yeah, I then think. then motherfuckers be smoking them big ass. Yeah, you just need a joint. Yeah, yeah. you just need a full or two. Yeah, take your meditation, think what you need to think about, and then whenever you feel the vibe again, you take a next pull again. And, yeah, you know what I mean. You just meditate. You know, don't smoke to get high. You smoke to meditate. Smoke to meditate. That's a dope tip, though. Let me ask you a question. At what point did you get to that level, or was it always like that for you when you started blowing? Oh, no. Nah. I know I started out young, you know, so yeah. <laughs> I was one of those ones just want, we, where pretty much just want to smoke to get high. Oh, every you know? Yeah. And then as I get older, I realize the real purpose of the herbs is to meditate our medical purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not just to get high. Yeah. But when you're young, you think, oh, it look cool. You just want to get high. But no, yeah. it's to meditate. So do you do you have a um like a specific strain you like to go to that to, to help you meditate or is it any any one that you pretty much blow on? Really? I prefer indica. So no, I'm an indica smoker. So I love any form of indica. Once it's indica, I love it. And if it's a hybrid, but indica dominant, then yes. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So maybe and I'm mostly laid back. I don't know. And that's hey, look, and that's a hint to um, your number one track on your, yeah, on, yeah. your on your album, man. Uh, Indica, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Well. Shout out to that one right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely the Indica, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm a favorite strand, so I had to make a song. But eventually, I'm gonna make sativa and I'll make hybrid. But for now, yeah. Indica first. You get your best experience with the Indica. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I know a lot. A lot of people say like. Um, the differences between the indica and sativa, like the sativa, how you uppity, uh, yeah, uppity and moving and stuff like that. Though, so 
how do how do the indica have you? Do you smoke it when it's just time to meditate, or like just say you get up in the morning and you finna start your day and get you know get yeah. going? Do you blow it in? Yeah. So the second tip I would give you, yeah, and that you know it would be you know okay. eat before you smoke. You know what I mean? But honestly speaking, as I wake up to answer your, your question, right. now, as I wake up, I grab my spliff. Mm -hmm. And I light and I take two puff and then I go do whatever I need to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can't really demand people to eat before they smoke because yeah. I don't do it either. Yeah. But that would be a good tip too. Yeah. Eat before you smoke. On everything. On, I, I usually smoke, then eat. Mm -hmm. Then smoke after. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> smoke before everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I find, I find myself when I was younger though, I would do that more. Mm -hmm. Smoke with everything. Now it's like, like for me, I get through the whole day, and then you know, by the time I'm done handling all my business or something, then now I'm blowing. Yeah. And then it might just be one joint. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, and I think like with me, like the smoke to meditate. Yeah. And then smoke to get high. I think it's like I'm probably in on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like meditation, deep thought. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like. I smoke to, and I I go into a deep thought. You know what I'm saying? I could probably like mm -hmm. reflect on certain things. I probably come up with a new idea. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. Then it'd be times to where it's like, shoot, I just stomp my big toe. I'm finna get hot in the mud. Like, you know, so I forget this. And then other ones, you know what I'm saying? While I'm just getting high, shit, I'm finna just play 2K. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And then it's like once we go to the sativa. Indica thing, hybrid thing. Mm -hmm. This is just personal opinion. I call myself a connoisseur, a cannabis enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I don't really see the the big difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I can smoke the indica, you know what I'm saying, and keep it pushing. Yeah. And I can smoke some sativa and like be kicked back. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I believe it's like the <laughs> situation of what the body is up to. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like <laughs> like smoke before you eat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like that's true too though. You know what I'm saying? Like because eat before it's, you smoke. Yeah, yeah. Eat, eat before yeah. you smoke. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of people say eat before you drink too though. You know what I'm saying? To like yeah, make a life. relation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But me, something like, like, like me personal experience, you know what I'm saying? Like me eating something yeah. and then smoking some bomb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What up that cough cup, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's some of that yeah, shit we done seen that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we done seen that, bro, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You so gotta let it like, digest yeah. then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's like with that, you know, <laughs> to, to extend on that, I would say, yeah, eat before you smoke, you know what I'm saying? But don't smoke immediately after, after you, you eat. eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta let your food digest. Yeah, yeah, I can dig it. I can dig it. So, 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 Ryan, tell tell everybody you know where you grew up at, where you was born and raised at, and stuff like that. Right, how so, you came up? Yeah, so I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. So you know, that's Kingston. South Kingston. Yeah, yeah, and I grew up in a neighborhood called Waterhouse. You know, yeah. If you have seen the movie called Shutters, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's my neighborhood right there. Yeah, you know, and um, everybody seen that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going down as a hood classic. Yeah, though. Yeah. yeah, it's a classic, no, for sure. And um, yeah, I was actually I was in Jamaica when that movie was making. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, because like I said, it's in my neighborhood. So I was, I remember the day they was mm -hmm. filming it and everything. Even yeah. um, a few scenes that I know of is not in the actual movie. Mm. You know, because it. They flim it right down the street from my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So So you seen the uncut version yeah. and stuff yeah. though. Like yeah, when I seen yeah. scene that I thought would have been in there, but it wasn't in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it still came out a classic though. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. You know? It was pretty good, you know. Like I said, my neighborhood, you know, obviously it's the ghetto, but in a third world country. But yeah. you know, you have what I call it like ghetto love, you know. So yeah. there's a lot of love there, right? You know? sure. And um, I grew up in the music industry for as long as I can remember. Okay. 
Yeah, so I used to be in the drum corps, you know, in a marching band. Yeah. And um, funny thing is, I played in a peace march. So, because mm -hmm. there was war in the neighborhood going on between neighborhood and neighborhood yeah. stupidness, you know? Around what but, time was this? Uh, yeah, around nine, nine, in the 90s. Okay. Yeah, around yeah. 90, probably 98. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I did um, a peace march. March out the whole entire neighborhood, Waterhouse, is, which is one of the biggest community in Jamaica, right. Waterhouse, you know? Big. So anyway, we played marching band, march out the whole entire neighborhood. You know, I was blowing blowing the trumpet then. I used mm -hmm. to play the side drum and the bass drum. Yeah. But by then I was blowing the trumpet. So it was a very good experience because that was the only peace march ever happened to this day. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when it happened, there was peace for like three years. That's what I was about to ask you. Like, <laughs> did it make a difference? Yeah. yeah. There was peace for three years. You know, and then a uh, next thing to uh, what, what I should mention, it was the World Cup. So it was mm. the 1998 World Cup. Yeah. And Jamaica made it to the World Cup. They first ever World Cup, first ever time they made it. They haven't been back since. Yeah. But I think they might go go to this one, which is coming to America yep. in 2026. 20, yep. so hopefully they come here, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can cheer for the reggae boys. On the real. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so so how old were you when you moved out, out this way? Uh, I was uh, 17. 17? Yeah. I'd um because I used to play soccer. Yeah. Well, football in the world. Yeah. But in America we call right, it right. soccer. Right. Yeah. So I used to play soccer in Jamaica under 14, mm -hmm. under 16. And I played. Actually, that is the last competition I played in Jamaica was under 16 for my neighborhood, which is Waterhouse. Yeah. I played under 14 for a rich club, right. uptown club called Medaven, yeah. you know, with my coach, rest his soul in peace, called Waga. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he rest was a peace. good coach to me. Yeah. And then I went to, I went back to my neighborhood because, you know, neighborhood guys trouble you. Yeah. You know, oh, you sell out. You went to the rich guys. And, right, oh, right, you right. You play for Waterhouse. And I'm like, yo, who no would understand? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes sports is politics too, you know? Right. Oh, for sure it yeah, is. Yeah. In every way, in every country. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes the, the coach already have his starting 11. Yeah. So you come into training, I mean, you might make the squad, mm -hmm. but you're not going to be a starter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, I peeped that situation. So I was like, yo, uh, it's yeah, not, yeah. not for me. I'm just. So I went went uptown, you know, to Meadowbrook, you know? Yeah. Medaven. Played under 14 for them. 20. When I become 16, I just come back home. Yeah. Went back to Waterhouse and played for my community. Was good. Went to the final. We lost. One love. You know? Yeah. Let me back it up a little bit and um, ask you, like, where, where did your inspiration for music come from? Because you uh, say you played a lot of instruments and stuff. Yeah. So music, no, it's like, I got a lot of relatives that's musician. you know? I'm a yeah. big cousin of them that won label when I was a kid, you know? And yeah. um, they used to sign the, the then big artists you know, they're still big, but they're not, you know, as relevant as back right, then. Right. So I used to go to the studio, to my big cousin's studio, Delan Reed, you know. Yeah. And, um, I always be hanging around the musician that was famous and big then, you know, I was a young right. kid, you know, so I was like, yo. Soaking yeah. it up. Huh? Yeah, soaking it up. And so the inspiration come from there. And like my mother said, from a band, my love music, she said, yeah. You know, I used to, she said my favorite song was Bob Marley and Peter Touch, Get Up, Stand Up. Get up she man, said man, I used man. to have a dance for it. Yeah. <laughs> huh. It's a funny ass story. That's a great it's song to, to, really? to, yeah. to gravitate to though. Yeah. And I was a kid, you know, so. Yeah. I inspired by a lot of musicians from Jamaica, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then as I got older, then I 
like the overseas artists, you know, American artists. Yeah. Some European artists. Yeah. Love Tupac. Mm-hmm. On every time. Every time. Yeah, me too. That's still my favorite artist. Yeah, my favorite rapper. Yeah, of all time. time. Nobody, yeah, nobody yeah. fucking with Pac. Yeah, Tupac you know what I mean? my favorite, you know, and after him then my love 50 Cent, you know? Yeah, mine yeah. would mine would probably be uh, Ice Cube and Scarface. Uh, Ice Cube, no, that two two, two yeah. legend. Look, let me ask you this though, you know what I'm saying? Because it's <clears throat> like on the audience, you know what I'm saying? It's like cannabis, meditation, and music. It seems like it goes together. You know what I'm saying? So it's like like musically, is that like part of the culture? You know what I'm saying? It's like with the instruments you guys play, and then it's like as far as like the cannabis used for for medical and and like meditation purposes. Yeah, I mean it kind of go together, but honestly, not everyone in Jamaica smoke marijuana or even like marijuana. Hmm. Not even the name they don't like, much less the smell. Hmm. Yeah, which is funny. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know because we both hit him with the hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. That is though, yeah, because I guess it's stereotypical. Everybody, you yes. would think everybody smoked. Yes. Just like you probably would think about California, you know. Yeah. Just about everybody smoked weed yeah. in California. 420 capital. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Nah. And yeah. really though, because it's like if you, you can sit back and smoke some good bud and listen to some reggae tunes. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? You can listen to some Bob Marley yeah. and it'll actually relax you. You know what I'm saying? And it'll put you in a certain thought frame. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, everybody out there, pretty much. Some smoke, some don't, you know? But I would, I would, I would most, mostly lean on more people smoke yeah. than, than don't smoke. Than not smoke. Yeah, I would have yeah. to lean on that. On everything. <laughs> most people smoke, you know? I have the girls, them who smoke marijuana. Some of them smoke it. Yeah. Harder than the guys. Yeah. The guys who smoke like 10 spliff, the girls smoking 25. Huh. They be like, damn. Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So so, what, what's ahead. your best way to smoke? Like your preferred way to smoke? You know what I'm saying? Me, like, oh, well, me, I love papers. I'm a paper guy, you know. I, yeah. love, I love raw paper. Yeah. You know? But, you know, I had my time with so many different names. Mm-hmm. And, and, before I went to Raw, I was on the Bob Marley papers. You yeah. Know? I kind of liked it because it always, otherwise from the paper burn good, it always have a little quote on each. Yeah. Every time you buy a paper from Bob, it have a quote in it. One of his lyrics. Yeah. yeah. His songs, you know. But then I transferred to the Raw paper. I love the Raw. Fa- fall in love with the Raw paper. Yeah. So, I've been staying on the raw for a minute, you know? Yeah. And um, recently now, well, I got these one now. These are the raw rolls. Yeah. Because sometimes I want to roll a long one. Sometimes I want to roll a short one. Yeah. Sometimes I want to roll a medium one. So I got these bad boys. I pull it out as long as I want it. Yeah, I got a, I got a box of those yeah. actually at the house yeah, though, I, that I ain't mess yeah. with. And they, yeah. they, from, uh, they from raw oh, too, though. Wow. Yeah. One, recently. One of them events. Uh, so recently, you now, um, I met um, two people, a guy and a lady, Stephen and um, Olivia. I met yeah. them at an event that I went to, but they um, do some work for Vibes paper, yeah. which is Burner. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. tried the Vibes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so. Shout out Burner. I've been Shout smoking the burner, Vibes man. of lately. Yeah. So. Yeah, they do burn. The vibes burn good. They burn good. I can't yeah. lie. So were you ever on the tobacco wraps or anything like that? Yeah, well, that's yeah, you know the funny thing is cause we smoke the the it's tobacco, but they call it fronto or grabba. Or grabba. Grab, grab, yeah. grabba. You know what I mean? So I just heard some shit like those ain't good f- yeah, to ain't be no blown good. on. Yeah. That's a tobacco. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's tobacco, so it can't be good if it's tobacco. Right. You know? Right. And, the thing with it, with me with it was, I wanted to stop, and I couldn't stop, and that's when I know this shit is addicted. Oh yeah. Because I want to roll a regular spliff, that's what we call it. Right. You guys right. call it blunt. Right. You know, I want to roll a regular spliff, just the herbs alone. Couldn't do it because the, I needed the grabber. So long story short, mm. I stopped smoking grabber seven years now. 
tobacco, I should yeah. say. So yeah. I stopped smoking that. I just been on papers straight because I started out on papers. One of my homies came to America and brought that shit to me. Yeah. And I got addicted to it, and then yeah. seven years ago, I stopped smoking tobacco, and I've been- So that's what's up, though. Like, like me, I stopped smoking the tobacco, shit, I can't even remember how many years ago, but I went to the hemp, yeah. like the hemp, hemp raps. Yeah, which is good, though. So, but for the past, maybe right. like almost four months, I've just been smoking papers, because I got so many papers, at the, you know what I'm saying, at the house. Yeah. I ran out of the, the, the uh, what was it, the camos? Yeah, the camos. I ran out of those. Yeah. And then I just been rolling papers ever since though, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> I've been back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm back and forth. I ain't got no preference. Nah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like right now, and I, I have just been on a loose leaf though. Okay. Loose you know leaf. Mm -hmm. Only reason I think I, I gravitated towards them is like I like the way it roll. Yeah. I like the way it burn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's what you gotta like. You like how it roll, how it burn, you know? everything so moving 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 here what was the difference compared to growing up ah. in jamaica and then coming to uh america, america. Shit. well and where did you come first like you ah, came straight to the west go. coast no there we go no that's yeah. a there you go no yeah. that's a question so right right came to america the first place i came to was miami okay mm. i only spent i only spent like a few days in miami though i only spent like I think nine days in Miami. Okay. And then I went to Atlanta. Okay. And then I was in Atlanta for a good while. All right. So I they used to call me the rude boy of the South. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so RBS was used to be my first name. Yeah. You know. But you know, like I said, I came here when I was a young, a teenager. So right. I, mm -hmm. so I was a boy. You right. Know what I mean, so you know, you grew up in a environment where is rough so if you grow up rough you're gonna be rough I stay with you age. yeah you know what i mean yeah. but when you get older now if you're wise enough mm -hmm. to use your brain yeah what well, we all have yeah. but we all don't use it then you realize say, hey, how long you're gonna be a boy so that's why i changed the name from rude boy the south to ryan cash you know go back to the original everything. name oh, everything. Uh, that was the original name to be honest but then when i get get to atlanta everybody was like road boy road boy you know and oh, then yeah. south my south southern you know homies them you know my cousin them yeah you know mm -hmm. they were like oh you know so they gave me the name really road yeah. boy the south and been in atlanta for years and then i had family in california too yeah i had family in new york too but Honestly, I don't really, I mean, I respect New York, but I just don't like it to live for me. It, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of downtown Kingston, downtown Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know, where yeah. just people just- A lot of people- Crowding yeah. and, you know, and sometimes I don't like that, I like look space a little space yeah mm -hmm. to move around yeah so yeah i can dig it came to california and then what part well you i used to always what come part you hit i used to on slasso you know yeah, yeah. you know they have yeah. a bunch of jamaicans on slasso yeah. so yeah. i used to come when i was you know young boy yeah you know what i mean so i used to travel to california come come out here mess with my cousin them you know well the rude boy cousin them that i have I used mm -hmm. to mess with them, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I have musician cousin, but I wasn't messing with my musician cousin. I was messing with my rude boy cousin them. Yeah. So I used to yeah. come out here and I used to be on Slauson yeah. all the time. Yeah. Where them Jamaicans at, yeah. the crazy ones at. Yeah. So I used to be there all the time hanging out with them, man. Yeah. I used to like it and I'm like, yo, this kind of a Jama Caribbean feel, I should say. Yeah. So I used to be like, yo, this have a Caribbean feel. It feel tropical. They have beach Cause, like literally yeah. down the damn street. Yeah. The weather warm because I hate the cold, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, you know, say, I think I'm gonna move out here, you know? Yeah. You know, so yeah. I always play in my mind and eventually I just move out here, you know? Yeah. yeah. So when and where were you when you first jumped in the studio? Uh, to make music. Well, I used to always go to the studio in Jamaica, my cousin, big my big cousin's studio, but I never recorded there. Yeah. You know, now my, my 
cousin with me and him are the same age, but he's my big cousin, little brother. Right. He used to record all the time. Okay. You know, Crossman, brilliant, you know? Yeah. So he used to record all the time, but I never really record down there, record in Jamaica. But okay. I used to be in the studio a lot. But mm. when I came to America now, first time I record my song was in Atlanta. And then my first professional song I recorded in Connecticut. Okay. At my same cousin house that I just told you about. Yeah. You know what I mean? The young one. Yeah. You know? So that was my first professional song. And then back to Atlanta again, record a bunch of what we call it now, underground music. Like right. Mixtape type stuff. Mixtape, right. yeah. Because them time, you know, DJ Drama mm. was yeah. at, well, 51st. Because yeah. I was young, you know. So it, it yeah. was from 50. Then. Like 50 was on though. Yeah, uh. It was from 50. Oh. Then, you know, then T.I. come with his little um, Down With The King. Yeah. You know. Then Jeezy Gucci yeah. Man. Yeah. And then Little Wayne come with his For Dedication. And yeah. then the next game was a rap. It was, mm -hmm. it was a rap from Let me ask you a question. Was you rocking with Jeezy or Gucci or both of them? Well, mm. it's funny, you know. Cause it's so funny because really, we used to rock with both of them, but really, I used to rock with Jeezy mostly. Yeah. Really. Because I don't know why, maybe just kind of like him, look, style. Yeah. But Gucci man now, I always respect Gucci man because Gucci man hang with the Jamaicans. Yeah. And but, I know some of the Jamaicans that he hang with. I used okay. to hang with. Yeah. As one of them even dead right now. Yeah. Dead years, years ago. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, why you saying Jeezy, like, like what you feel about the reports coming out now? Like, his whole rap, you know what I'm saying, was cap. Like, everything he portrayed, like, he yeah. come out and be like, nah, I ain't did that shit. He came out and said he ain't did Yeah. Oh, I ain't heard that. Well. They saying it was all cap. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I ain't did this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but you rapping certain stuff that like people actually lived. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These is partners and shit like that. Mm. Jeezy wasn't involved. All right. Well, what I can tell you about that is, because I was in A-Town when, uh, when that era, I was in the A. Yeah. And I was, you know, young boy. Yeah. In Moving the around. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Hang out with all them trap trap mm -hmm. niggas. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. And um, when I was in A Town, I was from Zone Six, which is Gucci Man side. Mm -hmm. That Gucci Man, you know, which is the east side of Atlanta. You know, so one I could tell a person I was a Gucci Man trap. You get me? Mm -hmm. No, Jeezy was on the what that West Side Camel Camel Campbellton Road. He was on that side, so I never really. I go over there because a girl, yeah. girls, I should say, you know what I mean. And um, but I never hang out there, you know. So I can't tell you really nothing about Jeezy and that red. Yeah. And they said Tip Ti. Yeah. Was in the field for real. Yeah. You get me? You saying with some. What What about what's the other? Uh, what's the other? What's the other nigga? Uh, that, that rest in peace. Uh, Oh, Shardy Loke? Yeah, yeah. Shardy Law. Yeah, Shardy Law. Yeah, from, you know, Bowen Holmes. Yeah. yeah you know, Shardy Loke was in the streets for real. You know, nobody can say Shardy Loke never used to be in mm -hmm. the streets. And, uh, yeah. You know, but like I said, geez, you know. Who had the most, since you was like out there moving around at that time, mm -hmm. who would you say um, had the most influence, though, Probably in that in Jesus. that era? In that and era. what year, like what year would you say, well, what was that? that era, it would have to be T.I. Okay, and so he was he was popping more in the city yeah. than Jeezy, Gucci Man, and, and Shorty Love. Okay, all of them. The only one, the only one could come well was, you know, yeah. Give Ti a run for his money was Ludacris. Uh. But he ain't even from Ludacris. Not he's not. Yeah, a, but he's not, like, not. They don't even recognize him like that like, though. Like I heard, you know, what he's what I'm saying? from Chicago. He's Chicago. Nah, nah, A Town. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know he was from Chicago. Ludacris from Chicago. Nah, a Town Love. Ludacris. Yes, that's uh, a fact. But, but he from Chicago. But, but the artists and shit though, not, yeah, not giving not, him his not, credit. Yeah, yeah, but you know, like they can't really say, oh, he was a street nigga, blah, blah, blah. He worked at the radio but, station and yeah, shit. Chris yeah, Chris Lover Lover. Yeah. That's his, you know, yep. radio mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Outside of them right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out of your recordings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out of your recordings. What's, what's the best uh, record you recorded? 
You know what I'm saying? I that mean the most to you. Yes. Yours. That mean the most to me? Where you enjoyed the most recording and all of that. Oh. Uh, well, the one that mean the most to me is called Break Her Heart. Because that's a song about my daughter. Me and mm. my daughter, I should say. Mm. So that's the most, you know, because I sing it about my daughter, you know, young, yeah, young boy, and um, following up the street life and um, mm -hmm. get in trouble, yeah, and couldn't get to see my daughter and raise her like how I wanted to raise her, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that was the most, yeah. You know, because yeah, sound meaningful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, on the real. But my biggest song is "Sorry, Darling." That's my biggest song. You know what I mean? Yeah. My biggest song is "Sorry, Darling." Yeah. But my to answer your question, it's "Break Her Heart." Break her heart. Yeah. So it's like what at that time it's like that was that like the transition from RBS to Ryan Cash? Correct, my brother. That's exactly the timing. Because yeah. I grew up without my father. You know, my mother raised me. And um, when I was growing up, I used to always say to myself, oh, me, I'll never leave my picnic. Kid, mm -hmm. in Jamaica, we call them picnic. You know, but I would never leave my kid. And oh, I would, you know, I don't want my kid, when I have a kid, I used to say, I don't want my kid to, Grow up without me as to a feel father. what you felt, yeah. To feel what me feel, yeah. cause I felt it, so I know it feel, you know. So I never wanted that for my daughter. Well, yeah, obviously, but it ended up happening by force, not by choice. Mm. You get me? Cause I was because of the mistake and situation that I was in and thing and thing. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of mm -hmm. forced upon me to do. What I had to do, you know? And, yeah. And yeah, hell that's yeah. That's life, yeah, it be like that. That's know? why I can feel it so much, you know what I'm saying? Because that was my transition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit, I got a daughter, and I'll be damn. If you feel me? You know what I'm saying? And it's like the time that I was away, that shit, like, it hit so hard. I'm yes. like, ah, oh, nah, yeah. nigga, I can't take this. Can't <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the, yep. thing, the worst thing about that whole thing is you can never get back the time. No. Nope. And that's the biggest problem. And it goes so fast. It goes so fast because as a quint, your baby is a big baby now. Yep. Real spare. You gotta, you gotta, as a good person, mm -hmm. if he's a good person as yeah. a man, yeah. you're only hoping in your heart that your child, boy or girl, have that compassion for you. Yeah. Like, well, I don't well. know what really happened, so I'm not gonna yeah. too get in his ass. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. On the real. Yes. On the real. For the best. Yeah. Yep. So look, fast forward into smoke one show. Yeah. So um how did you how did you get there as far as, you know, putting the idea together? Yeah. And what um uh, what you know drove you to, to to actually put it into action? All right. Well really um so really I did a cannabis album, a ten song cannabis album. You know? Okay. That's how much I love marijuana. Man, <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. So I did the album and after I did the album and you know, everybody was like, yo, it's a classic, it's a classic. And I was like, okay, well, I never really did it for it to be a classic. I just did it because I wanted to do a, a good cannabis album. Right. You know what I mean? So after I did it now. And everybody start giving it its praises. Oh, this cannabis album, weed, 10 song, all weed, you know? Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm going to keep an event for this album. Yeah. And I'm going to call it Smoke One. Yeah. But I need to add something to it. So I said, I'm gonna, it's going to be a show. Yeah. So I'm going to say Smoke One show where other artists, not just Ryan Cash. Right. Other artists can come and Let's showcase go. their talent. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't sing about marijuana. Yeah. You know, but showcase your talent, you know? And that's how I came up with the idea. Yeah. And from then, 
it just keep growing and yeah. growing and like last year, you know, we had um Walla de Sense as the headliner. Yeah. So every year it kind of grow in some form of way. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. That's what you want to see. That's what I want, you know. Yep. And it's not just me, but you know, I'm the you could call it like a spokesperson. Okay. You know, so yeah. I'm the face then. So right. I'm the face of the Right, yeah, right. The cash. So who, 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 like idea was it? Well, the idea was mine yeah. because, like I said, it come off of the album. Okay. You know, so it's off of the album, and then I was like, yo, you know, same thing I tell you. Yeah. Mo and then you just got with your team. Add the show it to it. Yeah. Put it to everybody. Everybody was like, yo, that's dope. Yeah, and yeah. then from there, I was just like, yo, all right then, let's keep it. Yeah. And then everybody just do what they're supposed to do because I already did what I was supposed to do which was oh, create the album <laughs> mm -hmm. and came up with the idea smoke one show yep. now everybody else got to do their part like who got to do promotion who got to do yep. acts yep. people to be involved and do all that and I just show up well do a lot of promotion too yeah but then just show up sing whichever song I want to sing yeah you know vibe with the people yeah make sure so everybody because it's about a good time so the sure. smoke one show is really to Keep the cannabis community together. Yeah. Because right. what I yeah. learned That's about right. the cannabis community is everybody in the cannabis community want to be the one. Mm -hmm. Or let's use a male term, the man. Yeah. So everybody wants to be the man. Like everybody, like why we have to do all of that? Man. It's 10 of us. Why we all, why all 10 That's of us? Enough. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. It's enough. All right. So they want money. Every day money print. So therefore there is enough money for every one of us. So if 10 of us come together and put this thing together and do it, then it's going to, yeah. I guarantee it's going to be done. enough money for all 10 of us to yep. eat. Yep. Oh, you want a hundred thousand? Yep. Well, it's 10 of us. We might make a million. Everybody get a hundred thousand. There you go. Yeah. But oh, instead, yeah. some people in the cannabis community is greedy. Yeah, envious and jealous. Yeah, yeah, you see you a lot of that. I mean? yep. So I'm trying to use the smoke one show yeah. to keep the cannabis community together. Really? Yeah. And like when I keep like not me, but we when we keep yeah. the shows and we we charge a little bit and nothing for the vendors mm -hmm. to come vent, you know, to make their to make back some money. Some people be like, oh, we're charging too much. We're charging too less. I mean, we should be charging more than what I'm like, no. Because it's not about we it's just about community. About, it's about the community coming together. Oh, so the yeah. vendors coming together, vendors yeah. come, knowing that they pay not too much money. It's a several hour event. So they have enough time to make back their money. Mm -hmm. You know? But the main thing is unity in the cannabis community. Oh, man. Yep. That, I know that's appreciated. You know what I'm saying? For like for yep. a platform to be set up for people within the cannabis community that's that's authentic. Yeah. Man, that's a blessing in disguise. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And it just came from me want to promote my album and stuff like that. So I'm gonna promote my album, you know what I'm saying, and give you an opportunity to come and promote what you Whatever got. Whatever you're doing. Yes. Whether so. it's cannabis or not, Doesn't you know what I'm saying? Matter. But this is coming in the smoke one show. That shit is fucking. And it's a great marketing strategy yeah. too, though, because it's yeah. cross promotion. It's cross shit, promotion. And I always That's talk about business. that too. You know, what though, you know what I'm saying? For shit like this, you ain't gonna find this nowhere else though. Yeah. Outside the cannabis community. For real. You know what I'm saying? When you find yeah. the authentic folks around here, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna go to Show like the smoke one show and like really have fun. I can't wait. And that's what yeah. I said. I can't wait. Fun, yeah. fun, fun. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to an authentic person, the homegirl, Betty Crocker. Yeah. Because she the Shouts one put Betty. us up on you. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. she the host. Yeah, on everything. Yeah. She the host, man. The yeah. host yeah. with the most. The you know what I mean? Yeah. Shout <laughs> out to host, co host Bree. Yeah. yeah. Bree. Yeah. Yeah. OC Bree. Yeah, we know the homegirl. Can't forget Bree. the co host. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Bree, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, epic night because like i said it's mostly it's a peaceful event mm -hmm. right? you know because you have you got reggae you got rap you got pop you got rock and i even got um a japanese band oh, okay right. you know but they do like heavy metal yeah so we got every genre yeah. of music yeah 
I know I appreciate it. And I ain't even there yet. I'm, I'm, <laughs> on the way. I'm gonna come vibe. And yeah. I want to shout out to my sponsors too. Yeah. You know, Quickies. Shout out one to of my sponsors. sponsors. Yeah, Snowballs, man. one of my sponsors. Kingston Wear, one of my sponsors. And definitely Vibes, one of my sponsors. Shout, Shout out. out all those sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. Big up. For real. For sure, for sure. So like when you when you perform a song at an event, at one of your events, do you um already have it lined up or do you just, you know, choose uh you know, in the midst of the you know, the same day of the show? Or do you already just have it lined up? No, I, I always have it lined up. Yeah. Because... Do you keep it a secret? Or, you know, is it something you talk uh, about? Yeah. Well, really, I, I like to keep it a secret, yeah. Because I like surprises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. to surprise people. Yeah. I love doing that. Yeah. You know, it made me feel good. On every because time. why? Because they feel good after the surprise. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. That's why I like that's to, a good feeling. I like to surprise people. So but my my DJ, he always know my show because we do it together. Yeah. So he already knows. So I like to put it together. Rears, go back to his house, rears again. You know, DJ Supreme, big up yourself. You know what I mean? We're rears, put it together, and he's a music fanatic. He's a genius. Yeah. So he'd be like, he'd be like, yo, this is the West Coast, you know? Sing this song, you know? I'd be like, yo, that song there? And I'm like, yo, trust me, man, this song, West Side, man, West Side, West Coast. All right, all right, cool. <laughs> what song you like performing the most? Um, the, well, I like to perform Sorry Darling the most, but Kaya is the people. Them, That's the people's favorite? They, I don't know what with that song called Kaya. They love Kaya. When I say Kaya, they, they, they just, Kaya, Kaya. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's a vibe. So, Kaya are the people them song. Yeah. And my song is Sorry Darling. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Kaya is their son. Yeah. Whatever That's the people right. choose, you have to work with. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Not what you will really like, you know. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you gotta you go with the, what the song? people want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what the people are yeah. like. Yep, so so um with the smoke one show, so your dreams with that is to just to see it grow and grow and grow to where you expand in different uh states, or have you did one in a different state? Um no, I haven't been did the smoke one in a different state. Okay. But I did some other events in a different state. Okay. You know, some other events. That you help organize? Yeah. yeah. I help organize and help put together, come up with the name, you know, with the idea. Because, you know, like I said, that's why I said smoke and meditate. Meditate, help create. You know, yeah. when, you, when you do that, and when I say meditate, I don't mean like, Oh, and all this nonsense. Yeah, right. That's not what I mean. Right. I mean, take a puff and realize that, damn, I don't even need an next puff right now. Yeah. I could let this shit marinate. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Because I'm glad you said that, too, because a lot of people won't uh, understand. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Oh, they probably thinking you met them. Yeah. Mm. Nah. Yeah. No, you feel me? You got to be like low frequency to, to like. But there's some it, people yeah. like that, though, that ain't yeah. going to catch you, on. If you like that, you don't even deserve to be smoking. <laughs> oh, every day. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, Man. But yeah, like you said, now, um, to see the show grow and get big and big and all that. Yes, that's definitely the aim. And. You know, keep the cannabis community together yeah. is one of the aim while this show growing, you know, because what I don't like is I don't like we we are friends today yeah. and tomorrow we are not friends. Yeah, that's the over bullshit. Some, over some simple stuff. Mm -hmm. Some simple stuff. Yeah. You know, I don't like. It's not authentic. Like, you know, so keep the cannabis community together, mm -hmm. you know, while the show will get big. Yeah. yeah. What what so what type of vendors, you know, um be at the we show? Have, so we have well we have every year we have a bunch of different different vendors. It's yeah. not just a particular one. Right. This year we only did six food vendors because okay. we trying to, to limit it where the food vendors come but they make enough money when they I go up, they, they make yeah. some Christmas money. Yeah. They make you know what I mean? Yeah. Take care of them family. Uh, we have 420 vendors. We didn't get too many of those either. I think yeah. we only got like eight, yeah. maybe nine. 
So we're trying to keep everything to a limit. We have like three, three clothes vendors, you know, mm-hmm. and then we have some simple other one, one vendors, soap vendors, Kango vendors. Yeah. So you sell what you sell. So, you know. But that's good because that's multiple different businesses that's able yeah. to, you know, promote their business yes. and, you know, make some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's a nice, it's a nice, nice event. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's mostly peaceful. It's a peaceful event where everybody come and just enjoy the show. Yeah. And network. Yeah. Because yeah. That's when, what it's about. when they come inside the venue, the first thing they get to know is that everybody is friends in here. Yeah. We all know each other. Yeah. Some way, some know. I don't know you, but I know him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He don't know me, but he know him. Yeah. So everybody know, you know, yeah. so we all friends, whether we know it or like it or not. Yeah. But that's dope though when it comes to um and this this is something that I've noticed going to cannabis events. Mm-hmm. It seemed like it's always like that though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, most people smiling, just chilling, ain't nobody yeah. really tripping, Bye-bye. everybody in their own mix and stuff yeah. like that. But when it comes to the cannabis, is you know, it's chill. Yeah, it's chill. always chill, man. Cannabis is the best thing to yep. consume. Yep. Not alcohol. Yep. You get me? Yep. Oh, cannabis, real. Herbs, the best thing. Whether you smoke it, eat it, drink it, whatever. Yeah. It's the best thing to consume. So, um, how that serve hitting you right there? Uh, yeah, it's all right. It's my first time drinking this thing, but it 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 cool. You know? Yeah. Kind of feel like I'm in the south sipping on that scissor. Yeah. 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 But yeah. yeah. well, not that scissor, but I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> we just bread. saying. Don't be sipping. <laughs> I don't drink that thing. I drink bread. water. <laughs> yeah, you gotta drink that water. You gotta hydrate. Mm. I like I like uh, fucking with the watermelon. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying the watermelon juice. So I see, yeah, I see on here. Um, you got the big ass joint on here. Yeah. So what year was this released? Oh, 2018. Yeah. So what happened now is next year. Yeah. Which is 2024 gonna be the fifth year. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a five year smoke one tour. You know, starting oh. August the thirtieth. So the tour is gonna be on the west west coast of America, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's dope. So what you gonna go like up north and stuff yeah. like that? We go. We go throughout. We go southern and northern California. Okay. Southern northern California. Yeah. And then the funny thing is, we're gonna end it, end the tour, at the smoke at the next smoke one show. That's so the dope. final. Four days is gonna and all be that the shit. Fourth annual smoke yeah. one show. Fourth annual. Gonna, that's the where it's gonna end right there. That's dope. And I'm gonna bring the big guns out next year. That's dope, that's right? That's dope. Chuck Lado, Young Molly. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Me and him got a song together called Gas Only. Gas Only. Yeah. That's dope about them trees. He got the yeah. best. He he have the best verse. Yeah. That I hear in a long time. Yeah. Okay. And you know we know music. Okay. He was on point, on topic, lyrically, execution. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Oh, my young Molly, Shark Lato. Shout out, yeah, shout out to Young Molly. Shout out Young Molly. Hey, look, so tell tell everybody where they can get tickets at uh, for the Smoke One show. All right, so tickets is on Eventbrite, the only platform where you can find tickets right now. You know, so go there and get your tickets. They're only 15 bucks right now. If you come to the door, it's going to be more, you know? So oh, go online, doing. get your tickets. Come out early if you can, please, and walk the green carpet. It's going to be paparazzi style, a lot of cameras. Pictures will be taken. Video will be recording. It's going to be live media streaming all night. A lot of good people, a lot of good music, a lot of good artists, a lot of good food vendors going to be there. And my sponsors them. You already know them. They already good, yep. you know. So, yep. good vibes. Come out early. Walk the green carpet. You know, network while you're there. Talk to people. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Take a lot of pictures. You know, if you can and have money, shop with the vendors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, know? mm-hmm. you have to spend everything you got. Support, yeah, spend support to get, yeah. yeah. You know, cause I got good vendors. Yeah, selling good food. So if he's a foodie. Yeah. Come get some good food at the smoke one yeah. show. That's right. Yeah. Not just the good smoke. Yeah. <laughs> give us, give us, um, give us a couple vendors that's gonna be there. Ah, uh, so we got um, Ju- Judy Eats. Uh, we got Fishbait Sisters. 
Okay. We got Dataguan, Dataguan. Kitchen. Yeah. And um, my next guy, I need to find his name. You yeah. know, he's a um, Mexican guy, but he sells some good ass food. Yeah. You know? So. Got a little bit of everything. Yeah, we got, we got, we got, there. we got. And we have Amari Cajun Kitchen yeah. also. You know? So, yeah, shout out to them. Actually, she's the last food. No, I got one more. Because I spoke with him when I was on the way here. He's the sixth one. Yeah. So, I got to do his. You know, boom, 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 boom. So that's right. That's, that's right. right. Man. And we definitely appreciate you um letting us be a part of it, man. And yeah. we uh we 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 happy to be a part of it. Hell yeah, yeah. Y'all tap gonna, in with it. Y'all gonna catch Serpo Jr. on the motherfucking green carpet. <laughs> yeah, Not the red carpet, the on green the carpet. Yeah, on green. The <laughs> yeah, man, definitely, man. And I appreciate you guys for having me. Mm -hmm. And you know, let me yeah. come out here and represent yeah. and, and let them and let them know what, what what's the date. Uh, this the date and time? 16th, and it's from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Yep, December 16th, from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. A.m. Just um, tap in on the Instagram, Smoke One Show. Yes. You know, you can click the link on the Instagram, hit the follow, you know what I mean? Tap in with them, and then, you know, hit the link and um, get you some tickets so, so you can go um, check out the Smoke One Show. Like you said, it's going to be a lot of dope performances, food vendors. 420 vendors, everything you need. Clothes vendors, you know what I'm saying? Put something on your back, get some food, and kick back. You know yeah. what I mean? And smoke one. Yep, and smoke one, man. So look, bro, we definitely appreciate you coming in, man. Yeah, man. It was a pleasure. We got to do it again. We can't wait to Respect. get to the event. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when you come back from that tour, too, though, yeah. we got to have you back on the show, man. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. I'm trying to take it everywhere. You know, so but we're doing it on the on the west first, yeah. and then from there, after we end it at the next smoke one show, yeah, then we're gonna see what we're gonna take it next. Take it next. East coast, south coast. That's right. Yeah, Everywhere. We yeah. Know. You know, we might just take it out the country. That's, That's a bet. Right. That's take a it bet. To Europe. On every Ain't day. Nobody, we gonna do it. <laughs> every do day. It. We put it out there. You gonna do it? So look, check us out at www.bestwaytosmoke.com. And um, you can check out our merch, podcast episodes from Spotify to um, Apple to our YouTube. You know, all the latest episodes will be uploaded there, too. Um, yeah, best way to smoke. Yeah, I'm on. Hit that like button, subscribe. Make sure you go on and tell a friend. Smoke one. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when all the dope content hit. Serpo Jr. with best way to smoke. Yep, yep. Shout out Ryan Cash, man. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah.